Okay, so I've got my water right here. And uh, yeah, the glass is extremely gross. Um, it's my favorite water cup. Um, funny enough, over time, um, the, the various different pigments I've used have, have stained this glass and it won't come out. I've scrubbed it as hard as I can. It won't, won't happen. So bear that in mind if you're using something at home. I usually tell people, grab yourself an old margarine tub or butter tub. Um, we all have them and uh, use those. That way, if, you, if they get gross after a while, you can just throw them away. All right, so I've rinsed my, my brush out. It, this was still slightly green. Boo hiss, um, um, but it's good to see mistakes. It'll hopefully stay in your head, and that way you won't make, make the same one. So just very lightly coating the little yellow uh, centers first. And I'm going to do that on both flowers first. Just all you're doing is putting enough fabric medium down so the color will stay in that tiny little section. Then for the center, just scrub. Look at that, nice blend. Very nice blend. I, I, I tell you, that's why I love watercolors. I mean, Inktense pencils are great. Don't get me wrong, and I think you'll see most of my videos do have ink tins pencils, but boy, how duty. I do love watercolor pencils because they're, in some ways, they're kind of more forgiving. Um, they're just easier to use, I think, in a lot of ways because the color doesn't go on so strong. You can layer the color, and I think for beginners, um, it's, it's kind of what I'm starting to recommend more and more as, as people ask me about the tools and what's best to use. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. I think what I wanna do is move on to these two flowers here. And again, I'm just gonna keep kind of the same color scheme. I'm not gonna get too carried away. I mean, after all, this is a beginner block. You know, I've had multiple different beginner blocks, but lately, bees, because I, I kind of watch the trends of what gets bought in my booth, bees have suddenly become quite popular. And uh, that's good, I love bees. I have a bunch of bee stuff on my website, so if you're interested, uh, the website should be linked in the description, so you can go look at that. Um, but yeah, bees have become pretty popular here lately. So I thought, well, I wanted a new beginner kit. I think, you know, there are some people out there who just like to do my beginner kits because they're fun, they're easy, they can, they can be done quickly, and you don't need to think. Uh, you know, I always write up the instructions uh, as uh, step by step, but paint, paint by number. Now, what I'm doing here is I feel like this particular flower is got some depth to it. And so we're looking in the center and I actually think I will go ahead and just put a tiny bit of orange just along the outside like this. Okay, but this one over here, I'm gonna treat the same way. <clears throat> Don't have to be perfect. Don't worry if it's not an actual circle, just get enough and just go around circle and circle and circle until you feel like you've got most of it covered doesn't have to be perfect um oh i like that all right i'm going to set the pencils aside again and i'm bringing my parchment paper up i think i'll start down here first probably could have used the bigger brush but i think sometimes <clears throat> You know, smaller brushes are easier for beginners to deal with. It, it won't get you nearly as much trouble as a big brush. Um, for those who are curious, gold taclon or acrylic paint brushes are what I use. The stiffer, the better. Okay, now over here, um, I'm going to come in first and just try to blend. You're going to get the orange kind of up into the yellow. I'll do that with all three corners. 
See, this is easy. This really is. I. And I tell people that this is all you do. That's this is all you need. I mean, yeah, there's a ton of other techniques out there. You can go watch my other videos for them. But frankly, this is still my kind of go-to favorite. When I sit down and I'm watching TV and there's a dog on one side and a cat behind my head, um, I usually use this one, this technique. You know, color first on dry fabric and then wet with fabric medium. And then, oh boy, that looks great. So then, you know, just to get a bit, since we have these deeper areas, let's put a tiny bit See the kind of depth that gives you? Ah, oh, that looks great. And hopefully if you're doing this, you'll feel the same way. Ah, oh, I love it. That looks fantastic. Boy, that really makes me happy. Um, you know, I, 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 I just love this stuff. I, I can't tell you again, it doesn't matter if I'm working on a really super simple project like this or whether I'm working on Sammy the Wonder Dog using resin paint on black. Um, for me, the artistic thrill is the same. Hopefully it is for you as well. Okay, so now I'm coming back. And yeah, those are actually pretty dry. Um, they're a small area, so I, you know, I feel safe now in using the blue. So let's talk about another technique and let me grab that blue here real quick. And what I want to show you here is how to do what I call gradation coloring. And that's this. You're going to come in and, and you're going to really strongly color the tip. See how nice and dark blue? And I like to come all about three quarters of the way down on either side, maybe. So really, really super dark. Now, and then lighten your pencil up almost immediately so that when you're coloring between the dark edge, you're really softening the color so that it's now become much more pastel. And, and actually leave a bit of white here. And let me show you why. Um, I'm gonna come in again with the smaller brush, dip it in the fabric medium. Now here, what you wanna do is come in and you're gonna stroke downwards. And you'll probably have to dip your brush in the fabric medium pretty consistently to get this. So see what I'm doing? I'm dragging the color into the white area so that there is the absolute faintest bit of blue without actually having to color. And this is the beauty of watercolor. I mean, this is what you can do on paper as well. The only difference is instead of water, we're using fabric medium. So, and then if you need to get a little bit more color, start scrubbing, you know, scrub up here in the dark and bring your brush down. Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. So that's what I'm going to do now for the next few minutes um, so that it gives you plenty of examples on how to do this. Again, I will be quiet as I color. All right, wow, I am very, very happy with that. Um, so I'm gonna be kind of sneaky here. This is called Scuba Blue, and just kind of putting just, it's got kind of a turquoisey look, just a tiny bit. Sometimes I experiment with the colors that are in, 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 in the palette box. 
just a tiny bit. And you may not notice it until it's dry, but it can give just a slight bit of additional depth. I mean, I thought the flower was just fine the way it is, but I always like to futz around and play with the stuff. Now, basically you would do the same thing here, okay? Um, I'm not actually gonna repeat it here again. I'm, I do try to, to, to keep these things as, as short and sweet as possible. But now what I'd like to do is to move on to the, this flower, try to get this flower in, but definitely do one of the bees so that you can, can see this. Again, most of the time, once you learn how to do some of these techniques, it's pretty straightforward afterwards. Now I think with this flower right here, this to me looks like a daisy. It could actually be a zinnia. Now I'm looking outside at my zinnias and there are a bunch of pinky, reddish, orangey. So, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to pull out three different colors and this is to kind of help learn how to blend. So what I have here is this is a pink called Cotton Candy. I've pulled out Tangerine Tango and Toffee Apple, okay? So what I want to kind of teach here is again, something similar to what we did up here, but now we're using three different colors. And I'm going to start with the light and move out to dark. So what I'll do and again, I'm not going, I'm going to do one petal and then I'll quit talking and, and you can watch me color. Um, so I actually want to choose this one out here because it's got an, an outside lip and I want to show you how to, how to deal with that. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I, I like the pink to kind of be up the stitch line. Okay. Nice cotton candy pink, very good. And and be generous with your pink. Don't don't stint on this, because it's going to be hard. You can actually lose this, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to show you this technique. You need to be careful not to uh, let the orange or the red overwhelm it. So what I do is I'm going now with the orange. I'm slightly, very slightly, overlapping. Okay but not a lot. I'm also laying that orange down fairly light. I'm, I'm not using a heavy hand. Like when we were doing the green, I was pressing pretty hard over here. Um, this is more a, a much lighter hand because again, I don't want to overwhelm the pink. I want you to be able to see it. And I'm going to carry it just kind of right up to the tip, which I, then I'm going to come over with the red. Again, being light handed, I just put a little bit of red, slightly overlapping. Now, with this back edge, and one thing I've noticed about my zinnias is the back side often is darker than the front side. So I'm going to just use the red, and you notice now I am pressing down hard, and I'm 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 putting a lot of color in that that back area. So that looks good. Okay, so let's go through the process of how to. Put fabric medium down. Now this is a directional thing. You really need to work from the light and get kind of most of that pink done and try to maintain the pink color. And then I actually tend to work from the opposite direction from the red down into the orange, stopping bef my brush before I get all the way down into the pink. Now maybe I'll carry that orange down ever so slightly just so it blends well so there's not just this really super stark line. And that looks good. So see, you can still maintain the pink. You've got a nice blend of orange and then the deeper red up top. Then last but not least, come in with that background red uh, behind the, the, and there you go. There's some, it kind of gives you some depth. So I'll go ahead and do all the rest of that flower uh, without talking. And you can see um, more examples of how this process it works.
Okay, so that's it. Now, you may be saying to yourself, oh, that's kind of looking a bit too pale, and you would be right. Um, let me grab some more fabric medium. I was running out as I was doing this. I wanna show you a little technique that I often use when I need to add a little bit of color. And I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing the red pencil. And maybe I just want some more color up here to kind of you know show a, contra a better contrast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm dipping my brush into the fabric medium and I'm just going to rub it along the tip. Now, if you're using plain colored pencils, this doesn't really work very well. This really needs to either be an ink-tense pencil or a watercolor pencil. And, and let me pull this up closer to here because I want to show you what I'm doing. I'm actually putting the color on the side of the pan here so that I don't grab too much and make it really super strong. So I got rid of most of the color. Now what I'm coming in here and doing is just bringing that red down ever so slightly into the orange to give it a little bit more contrast. And I can just pick up a little bit more red. Now I don't want to lose that pink, okay? So be careful not to drag this too much into the pink. But just that little bit of color, you can see it, it deepens those edges. Because really, if it was coming up to the edge to the back, it would look like this, a deeper red anyway. Let's get this one over here. Um, and, and this is why I like to say, you know, start out light. Um, because then you can always add color. But if you start out dark, it's a whole, whole lot harder to, to lighten it up. Now, that's what that white um, uh, pencil in there is for. But let me just say this. Even I have difficulty managing um, a white watercolor pencil. They either don't go on at all or they go on too heavy and then you get this kind of really mess on your hands. Um, and that, I'm not gonna do that in this video, I'm just not. Uh, it, would, it would cause you to go astray and I'm, I'm wanting you to master these techniques first before, before any fixing of boo-boos. And yes, there is the boo-boo pen, but it's not gonna be drug out in this one either. Um, there are other videos I've got about the boo-boo pen and you can go watch those. I really want to get the coloring of techniques. Now that looks much better. So notice, again, I just did a little bit on the side, a little bit on my brush, got rid of the excess here, and was able to come out and deepen the color. Okay, now let's move on to this little puppy here. And this one, I would like to use the violet and... I think violet and red. Now I know that's a bit of a strange color combination. I'm gonna kind of hold the orange close by. What I'm really sorry about, oh, the pink. Maybe I'm gonna drag out the pink. There we go, that's what I need. So pink, red, and violet. Now I love doing this color combination, mainly because of the contrast. Um, and I'm gonna reverse it this time. We're gonna put the darker color at the bottom and work up to a lighter color because I want you to see both techniques. So I'm going to do one petal first and then I'll go all the way around and then um, we'll talk about this. Now, again, it's just reverse of what we did over here. So in this case, we're gonna come in and we'll put the pink where I put the red over here, okay? And in this case, you can be really generous with the pink, um, even if you wanna come down half ways down the puddle. Because I really want that pink to be as pink as possible, but I also want a pretty decent contrast going into the red. So I'm actually gonna be kind of light with the red. I don't want too strong of a red, okay? And then really come in good with the purple, or in this case, it's African violet. I prefer violets when I'm working with pinks and reds. Violet is kind of the red version of purple, whereas purple purple itself is kind of more focused on the blue side. So 
And when I come down here to the bottom, I actually like to go in the opposite direction to really get a strong kind of bottom part and then maybe come up on the sides slightly. All right, let's put the fabric medium down on that. Now in this particular case, because I was so generous with the pink, I don't mind coming up from the purple. Oops, got a hair at the end of the brush. That's what happens when you live with multiple animals. And you may need to go back and forth between the purple and the red to kind of get a nice contrast. Yeah, I don't see as much red. Let's put a little bit more red down. And I'm always a bit paranoid, but I think in this case, we can definitely be stronger on the red and work that down towards into the purple. Ah, yeah, there we go. And then if you really want a nice strong purple bottom, come back in, trying to get into the stitch line with that purple, maybe even carrying it up the vein a bit, carrying it up over there. Okay, smooth that out. Ah, lovely, 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 love that. And then Again, working from the opposite side, bring that pink down into the red and kind of marry those two together by scrubbing back and forth. Now, this is kind of a fantasy flower. Are there any out there like this? Probably not. Um, but I like this color combination because it's kind of an exercise in how, again, to take really strong colors and combine them all together to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go th forth and color the rest of this and stay tuned. Oh, by the way, when my pencils start looking kind of dull like this, um, it's time for me to sharpen. Now, I typically prefer to work with a dull head. You know, when they first come out of the box, they're super sharp. They always make strong lines against the fabric and it's really hard to work out. So typically what I'll do, if it's really super pointy, I'll break off the tip and then rub it against paper to dull it down a bit. But when they really start getting stubby like the pink and the red, it's time to sharpen them up a bit. So I'm gonna put this on pause while I go sharpen up these pencils.